Good evening, and welcome back to The Crust. Our science rover is about to hit the repeater, and I'm hoping it can do it before night falls. But we can continue with that, because uh, that would be nice to do. Let's, um... Chasing the sunset. Well, chasing the sun? It's avoiding the sunset, kind of. Let's see, let's see, let's see, repeat it. will be extremely difficult to fully reactivate the repeater under the current circumstances. It will still serve our mission, but it is no longer connected to Earth. We extracted the necessary data, but I'd suggest holding off on reporting it to Crust. It's full of valuable resources that would come in handy at our base. Mr. Ratchet, are you out of your mind? You're going to go behind Crust back. And this rover isn't even capable of carrying cargo. We'll report the data we found after retrieving the surviving resources. Crest doesn't necessarily need to know they existed. For delivery, let's try to fix this piece of scrap metal. Pathfinder 3B. It's an outdated model, but it has increased maneuverability and payload capacity. Just what we need. So, I'm... Actually, going to side with Crust through this playthrough. We're going to be a corporate man. We're going to go with Crust, and we're going to try and make money, and we're going to try and do it that way. So, Crust may seem friendly, but don't forget they control all the ins and outs of the moon. We don't need to make enemies among the creators of the space elevator. Transmitting message to Crust. Objective achieved. Cool. Thank you for forwarding that data. We anticipated that restoring communication might not be easy but the situation is even worse than expected. The entire lunar navigation system is down. Listen to me carefully, Director. From now on, any information you receive from Crust must be classified as confidential. You are tasked with organizing and providing an expedition to the far side of the moon, to the meteorite impact site. To accomplish this, you will need to obtain navigation data for the transport, Deploy a life support system for the operators. Await further instructions. Okie dokie, yes sir, we will do exactly what you say. Okay. So, Crust signed us up for a top secret operation without even asking the director. It surprises me that they ask for his opinion about accommodating Hope too. Usually, if Crust wants something, they don't ask permission. Given the current situation, this is even to our advantage. Their capabilities on the moon now depend on us. This means we can get everything we need from them in exchange for cooperation. Crust's tasks require significant resource investment, which means we need to seriously expand our manufacturing capabilities. Let's start producing components. We need titanium to manufacture parts. Find titanium deposits among the regolith using an ore detector to seriously expand our manufacturing capabilities. Let's start producing components. Okie dokie, build your detector. Yep, easy enough. Then we'll scan. So I think this is titanium here. It might be aluminium. I always get the two confused. One is blue, one is silver. Don't forget to connect it to the network. The ore detector uses battery power to run the scans. The further the scanning area is, the more power it requires. Select the finished ore detector and scan the regolith around it. You need to find the nearest deposits to install extractors on them. Important, using the detector consumes battery charge. The larger the scanning area, the more battery charge is consumed. Remember this, and don't leave your base without electricity. Okay. But I will also point out, for those who are newest to the game, on this little tutorial here, that's the old picture. That's the old picture for the guy. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Just so, so you're aware, you might find that you might find little some some older pictures. Okay, so the ore detector is um is an interesting machine because it can detect also. I know this one here because we've unmined it, we've uncovered it, unmined it, we've mined it out, we've uncovered it. However, if you have a look around, um, it's very difficult to see, but I don't know if you can see it there where my mouse is, right there. See, there's a little like wisp is the best way I can describe it if I move the camera back and forwards. Just there, so just on the edge of it, right there, there's a, there's a wisp. That is an ore. There's also one, if 
further along, just there. So if I was to put this here, we would scan this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so we'll do that. That's going to kill our batteries, however. Bum, Great bum, bum, job. Bum, bum. Now build a components factory and supply with titanium and steel. I'm sure, Director, this will be an easy task for you. Okay, I did not see... Um, I saw that one and that one. I didn't see that one. I didn't see that one. There's one there as well. You see, if you scanned close to it, it shines up. This is all uh, rare earth metals, so it tells you that you can't mine through them at the moment. We have to research rare earth metals. Um, the further you run, the more charge it will use from your battery. So you see down here, so if we go all the way, it's, it's 100,000. So, um, yeah. Uh, one other thing I would definitely recommend is when you're not using the ore scanner, turn it off, power it down. It only uses two electricity, but if once you've scanned, just turn it off. You don't need it anymore. Just 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 shut it down. So yeah. Uh, let's do this here. I need to research auto repair because that's so much better. Do that because we need 45 iron and we have 26 steel for it. Okay. Um, you don't have enough power because we don't have enough power because I've killed the batteries overnight because we have to wait for them to charge in the day. So yeah. How are we doing for research? So we are researching the land and pack and we need that. Automatic repair is the one where you don't longer have to hit the button. It will just go and scan things on its own. I want to add the large solar panels to our, or medium solar panels, I should say, to our system because that's going to be useful for us. We don't need any social yet. We do need the licensing system, but um, we don't need it yet. We need to um, get some other things. Director, going. our energy reserves are almost at zero. The moon has a long day night cycle. Make sure we have enough solar panels to charge the batteries during the solar phase. In the event of an urgent power shortage, modules with low priority are the first to be disconnected from the network. You can manually disable modules that are not needed at the moment to optimize consumption. Okay, okay, right, that's fine. So let's see. So our power is charging. The issue I think we had was that last time I had two batteries, I didn't have these three connected to the grid. That was that was my mistake. I messed that up completely. So. Um, do that. We're also wasting science points apparently. Yes, we're wasting social science points. So let's get rid of that and let's put this in here. Because we don't want to be wasting social science at all because we only have it for like a hundred days. So, um, okay, so now this can charge and it is charging um, plus 36 is charging. So we are generating 120. We are consuming 78 maximum. Um, and now we're charging 42, so um, the consumption is the important thing to look there. So our maximum consumption is 78. Our output depends on the battery throughput. So these batteries have a throughput. They have a maximum output of 10. We have five of them, which means when we mass over this here, it says our output capacity is 50. So because we have a maximum consumption of 78, that means we are 28 in deficit. We do not have enough power to run all of our equipment when the solar panels stop running. Right now we're okay because we're running on battery power and solar panel, but we need to build more batteries to cover that. So let's do that. Let me copy this battery here and we'll put in um, some more here. Oh, I can't put one there because of the power things. Let's put a couple more in like this. Um, I'll put one down there as well. Let's connect this to our uh, power grid. This is all going to be jumbled, higgledy piggledy, dire wire, um, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, so there we go. So now we do that there. So our output capacity is now 70, and it should go up to 80 in a moment when the ne next battery comes online. But there you go. That's 80 output capacity. We have a capacity of 78 needed, so we can run all the modules at night when the uh, things running. It's not just how much power you have stored. It is how much throughput you have. The normal batteries supply 10. Uh, the large batteries supply 50 ago, I think it is. So bear that in mind. Bear that in mind. Okay, let's repair that. Um, uh, do, do, do. Can we repair this now? We can. Awesome. Let's get this going anyway, because it's going to be useful. We might as well build it up and get it going. Uh, let's have a look at our rover. Um, you're not producing a great deal of science. Let's uh, go over here. Let's get this. The rover, as it's running around to the moon, generates science here. If you leave it in one position for too long, it will um, eventually go down to zero because it's like scanning the whole area around it. So it does, has can get no more scientific information from that place. So move it, move it around there and you'll see these numbers start going up. 
it does remember places so you can't just move it backwards and forwards so you have to keep moving it around the moon as you go the further away from base you put it the better the science is but it can still deplete from wherever it goes so and by better i mean it just the, the numbers tend to be higher if you're like traveling right to the north pole or something um the numbers the, the rover gets in tend to be better Research so uh, and it can still generate power even during nighttime when it has no uh, thing so uh middle barren landscape lies a lone control tower there are no obvious signs of damage and the structure seems to have been abandoned for some time there are no people or the usual rover in sight emergency box is empty and the only interesting thing is the information on the control computers according to it a supply convoy was supposed to pass nearby but never received its destination awesome so we've received 200 fundamental science 200 engineering uh, sorry 60 engineering science and 60 social science for 60 days each so that means that here it now tells us they go because we scanned it we get some science however this is now turned over to a new Research icon complete. this icon means search the area search the area ignore the weird thing there that that's where the egg opens okay that's that's where the uh yep that's where the egg opens um so um uh that's a doctor who reference for those it's not an actual thing in the game uh so if we locate hidden objects, we can scan the area. The weird story that pops up for this, I bet you, and it'll be after I finished doing this sort of thing, but we'll scan the area. So see these higher lines here? There is something over here. Our radar has found something over here. So we'll travel over here. Go. Night time is coming. That's a bit of a problem. Um, I'm going to pause the game momentarily and go into our science again because apparently we have got the license system. Awesome. Let's get um, the online market and that. I just want to use the the um, social science app because it's nice to have. So, okay. go over here, quick. Go before the moon, before the um, sunsets. Go, 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 go. You can't tell from the look of this old timer, but the cargo truck has passed all its tests and is ready to go. Also, we have a cargo truck now. Eee. Cool, 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 cool. We can't really do a great deal with it right now, but um, yeah, we could be useful. Let's uh, tell it to go away. Boom, off you go, off you go. Go back to the surface moon. We're doing something else. Pause. So we're over here. We're over here. So now we're over here. We have moved to the edge of where we will scan again. And it's probably going to continue to be this way. Let's see. Yep, still be this way. So move again. Go, 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 go. Hoping we can find this before the power runs out. Do, do, do. So it's kind of like a check. You, you run to the edge of the scanning circle. And then once you get to the edge of the scanning circle, you scan again. Um, and then eventually you will find it because it will start going bling 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 that you found an object so let's scan again now oh there you go we found right next to it normally if it was across the edge it would be a little like, pling pling as you go by you drive to it scan again you'll find it but we were right next door to it so let's investigate this we should have the power to do this here we can scan this Bum. The convoy was transporting several tanks of liquefied fuel in a couple containers with various spare parts and electronic equipment. It seems that the vehicles were seriously damaged and buried under collapsed rock. You can immediately send a cargo truck to collect the easily accessible cargo, or you can try to break up the rubble with a rover. It will be necessary to send drones to excavate most of the cargo, but the operation to retrieve it might be risky. So every time i've had this mission i've always sent the drones out and it's been successful and we've always managed to get the fuel i think this time i'm just going to clear the rubble and see what we get instead i want to try and do different choices so i've done this one uh, you send two drones out from the base um you uh um two drones in a rover we can't do that because we don't have an expedition center so i'm just going to clear the rubble with the rover Bonk, a rover is capable of dealing with a small rubble pile Decided to explore the location so it can take care of business. Boom. Okay. So we have a choice. Combo. We want to start an expedition. You can do this without expedition center, provided it doesn't require any resources. So we want to send the uh, scout rover because that's the rover we're going to use for this. We're going to investigate it again. Boom. I could just click it and right click, and that would work as well. Um, but you only need an expedition center if you are sending resources or drones or people. If, if you have to send something to it, that's when you need the expedition center. Okay, here we go. let's see what happens this time around here. Oh, pause the game again. Um, go into here. Uh, so engineering has finished. Um, oh, you just need fundamental. How else can we get an engineering that would be useful to us? Um, components factory. We need that. Let's get the components factory. Um, so, uh, pause the game. 
up against the research and you'll see the you can do the different researches down down the tree they basically just wait in order um if you ever have it saying wasting science points cancel something can put something else in to do it when you cancel an item it doesn't lose the science it just pauses to where it is just absolutely pauses to where it is so you don't have to worry about that um so i mean i haven't done anything here but it will it will do like this one it will it will, it will have slightly full area to tell you it's been slightly researched so um you know this expedition said to repeat i want to get the repeater early this game so that we can start getting missions in because i always leave the repeater because there's so many missions out on the surface to do things with but they can give you a nice boost of resources early so i should go for that so that's what we're going to try and do so okay let's see if our rover can do this without running out of power i don't think it runs out of power when examining an area so taking some time to do this thing uh, i'm going to send the rover here because i know full well we have to pick up some things the rover's magic powered it doesn't ever have a battery run flat even though it's got solar panels on top i don't know why that's a thing but yep the the, the uh, cargo rover never runs out the science rover does the rover so. successfully cleared the rubble and retrieved the fuel tank send a cargo truck to collect the goods awesome okay what do we get we got 200 fuel i think normally you get more than that you get more fuel but i don't remember there being other components i remember there being just loads of fuel you get so okay so we can send an expedition uh we'll send the cargo truck but on we want to collect all these things and i'm going to say go back to base because then it picks up the items and drives back to our base and everything's fine so boom there you go awesome and the scout rover we're going to send down to here um and it's going to travel a little tiny bit and then run out of power because light time. okay uh, we don't have to have power to run the battery because we didn't actually get our batteries charged properly during the day so that's a problem um let's build some more solar panels i was kind of hoping honest with you i was kind of hoping to get to the medium panels as soon as possible but yeah um, to put loads of loads of um uh, wires in like i did there if you just hold shift click and drag um, it will, it Director, will do it. it looks like the rover has run out of power. Ooh. Now, it couldn't be the turtle in a race, and until the sun is up again, there's nothing we can do about it. The rover is solar-powered, and as soon as the sun goes down, it starts using energy from its batteries. Keep this in mind when planning long-distance expeditions. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That has, that has absolutely bitten me before where i've gone you need to just travel up here just the sun's come down that it's failed a mission because it just hasn't got there in time I'm like, ah damn it i'll do there is upgrades you can get in the science tree to um uh, make the rover batteries last longer kind of wish you could get a nuclear power road with that would that would be nice but but oh, okay. okay so they'll charge during the day that'll be fine um we're on here um uh, other thing as well we'll say don't be afraid of building um like so if you, like i was holding off for the medium panels don't be afraid about building the small ones or building other things when you destroy things um you get a hundred percent of them back so you get all all the stuff all the resources you used to build them you get them back um, we can't do that yet because we don't have salvage uh, we need to unlock this one which is kind of why i had the drone upgrade thing in there because i want to get down to salvage so we can start clearing some stuff off of the surface we have a landing pad awesome let's build a landing pad landing pads are very useful i'm going to put it right smack bang next to the um, docking bay for the moment because it's just easier all our resources are underground it's just easier to come up above that so yeah okay what else do we have here iron hydrogen titanium titanium we don't have any aluminium we also don't have any batteries so i'm not gonna do anything with that yet so uh let's get a another mine going here can we get two on here Objective achieved. nope now sometimes you can get two on a single node but it doesn't look like i can for that one so put them there um and uh, a lot of people say started. This contract will help us establish ourselves as a reliable business partner. So it's important to perform at our very best. Director, now I'll explain the basic principles of working with the Logistics Management Center and the Contracts Exchange. Yep, but you'll do that in a minute because of two things. Um, one, a lot of people say um, rotate it around so you can try and get on better. It doesn't matter. There are four highlighted areas um, behind. Sorry, four. There is a, a two by three again there's a three by three there's a nine area behind it um that has to be on top of it so rotating it doesn't matter because you're only after the end of it 
So it doesn't matter if I rotate this way or that way or this way, you can simply get it in there. So it doesn't matter which rotation you have. The only rotate, the only thing about the rotation is the output. So um, so that's why I can get two on here. So we've got one here and we get one here because there's enough space to put um, 18 tiles. Right, so if this one might have 18 tiles, but because it doesn't have two lots of three by threes, it will not allow you to put two on there. So rotating around doesn't make a difference. So, so um, yeah, there's no, no real point in doing that there. Um, let's get the, um, right, what are we wasting? We're wasting, uh, social. Uh, so let's get the extended trade license and then that one there. There you go. We'll add those to it so they can just be researched as time goes on. So, but on pause the game, that should go away now. Thank you. Right. Okay. You can't build this because you need smart concrete and we don't have any smart concrete because we don't have any smart concrete. Why do we not have any smart concrete? Where was you? Where's the smart concrete began? Oh, probably repairing things. Probably repairing things. We have unlocked um, automatic repair though. So now when things get broken, they will automatically be repaired by the drones. So that's cool. Okay, let's do the new contrast system. Let's see what Ledger has to say. At the top of the screen are the main categories of the control center. We're looking for the contracts category. You're now in the contracts tab where you can see all available, active, and completed contracts. The left column shows the factions that issue contracts. Click on a faction name in the active tab. This is on active contracts, so... In the center is information about the faction and its contracts. Now select the active contract. So when you select it, you've got a little blurb about the actual company here, which is, is a lot of them are quite interesting. So, um, uh, um, and then you have, um, so here, the contract availability time. So this is how long the contract's available before it disappears. When you've accepted them, it usually comes blank anyway. So um, doesn't that, but um, if you are in available contracts, it might say it's only got two or three days. So if you're trying to save up to complete a contract, keep an eye on that because the contract might be gone. Also, if there are any urgent contracts, they usually only last two or three days and then they're gone. So you want to keep them done quickly. Uh, the completion time is how long you have to complete the contract before you fail it, sort of. Um, that's the complete time to fail. Uh, there are payment categories with inside that. And the location here is an important one. Keep an eye on this. Earth means you have to have a landing pad or a flight center to send pods back to Earth. Moon means you have to have an expedition center, fill a cargo rover up and send it to the moon, which means it's consumed your cargo rover and your expedition center until it's going. The expedition center can only fill one rover at a time and it's a lot slower than the landing pad. So uh, this is how much money you get. This is the other resource you get. So we get 20,000 and we'll get 100 um, engineering science. Doesn't tell you how long it is, at least not yet. And this is what it requires. So if we click this. This window provides all the information you need about the selected contract. Here you can track its status, accept or cancel contracts, and send resources. Please take a look at it and click send resources when you're ready. Okay. So when you open this up, you see the completion time um, is indefinite. So it's got an infinite contract. So we can take forever to complete this contract and they won't mind. They won't have any problems with it whatsoever. Most contracts have a time. And if you fail them, then you get a uh, bad mark against you for, for um, failing the contract so uh, and I think it's the same if you cancel it as well so it doesn't matter if you run out of time or cancel it it's the same however what I meant by the time of this one is that a lot of them are split up into two or three time categories if you complete it within the first time category you will get a bonus so the normal reward was 20,000 and 100 engineering science for 90 days so that's 100 every day for 90 days 9,000 science it also gives you 400 relations with this company um, and the better relations you have with the company, the higher the contract. This is the reputation bar here. Um, the higher you go up here, the more contract, the more complicated the contracts become, as in the more exotic the materials they want, but the better the reward is. So it's worth doing. And then you have an overall reputation. I'm not sure what that's for. I believe it's something to do with um, you get contracts, urgent contracts sent to you, like they 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 go can you do this for us? Rather than you looking for a contract, they ask you for it. So I think the higher your reputation, the better that is. So yeah, uh, here's the requirements here. Uh, you can go back to the previous screen. You can cancel the contract. If you cancel the contract, it will cost you things. This is free, but you can cancel it. Um, and it will normally cost you a certain amount of credits and they're here for reputation. When we click send resources. You have entered the logistics interface. 
On the left side of the screen is a list of required resources, which you fill in from your base's supplies. On the right side of the screen is the shipment configuration. You can modify the contract, capsule type, and landing location. In the lower right corner, next to the send button, you will see a list of actions required to successfully complete the contract. This is how you will know if something in the configuration needs to be changed. Fill the capsule with the required resources, click send, and wait for the contract to be completed. Okay, so they want titanium plate, want 25 titanium plates. Um, we currently have 10, so we can't complete this contract. So we need to make more con more of that. However, what we can do is we could send 25 of them. What will happen is a pod will come and land on a landing pad, take our 10, and then wait for um, the next 15. And it, every time we make one, it will send 15, it will send one and one, and, and eventually it will end up um, getting completed and done. However, if you do that, your landing platform is then occupied, which means you cannot be completing another contract. You can receive goods because goods can be landed anywhere. They don't need a landing pad, but you can't send them. Sending goods requires landing pad. The cargo pod is basically the sizes of them. So the standard one is uh, 3,000 tons. It's 3,000 units because um, the, the uh, tons. Yeah, okay, we'll go with tons, but it's a bit weird. Um, but it's, uh, it's 3,000 units, and this, this is 500 units for 25 of them. Uh, the faster cargo pod isn't faster. It's just bigger. <laughs> It's a twice the size of the standard pod, but doesn't cost twice as much. It costs more than twice as much. So, yep. And the larger one is three times as much, but doesn't cost three times as much. It costs more than that. So, really, you're better off sending, um, like, two standard cargo pods rather than one faster cargo pod because it will save you money. It's it's very weird. Um, eventually, you get to a point where you just don't care and you just start using the larger ones anyway because it's just more convenient to do things. But yeah, you can also send partial units. So uh, we'll send the standard one. It'll cost us 1,400 to send this, whether it's full, empty, or whatever. But we could send 10, which is what we have. It will fill up with 10 and go away. The contract will still remain because you have 15 left to do, but it won't fill up the landing pad. The landing pad will then be empty so you can do other contracts. Right now, I've only got one contract, so we're not that fussed about it. I'm actually not going to send this contract yet because we need to um, get more titanium plates. We could buy them in. Can we buy them in? Let me have a double check to see if we, we can. We do have access to the market. Okay, so let's, that, let's do that. Let's complete this contract this way here. So i uh, have gone back to the main contracts tab. Um, send resources. I'm going to go bomb, send all 25. We need 15. We need extra 15. Standard cargo pod, only if it's not capacity for that. Um, so, yeah, um, so send. Put on. Awesome. Okay. Now, if we go back to here, as I said, a landing pod will come in. Here it is. Blop. It will start getting resources from our base. The drones will start filling it. And everything will be awesome. But we don't have enough because we need more. We need more. We only have, we only have 10 of the 25. Um, I'm going to quickly go on to here. What does this rover have on it? It's got eight on it. So we could wait for this to come back and get some more. Then we need to buy a few. I'm just going to buy 15. So it goes, we've got 182,000. You can buy and sell goods and play the market. Um, it, it's it's doable. It used to be a lot easier in previous patches, but it is still kind of doable. So um, so this, market, this, this contract is going to give us 20,000, remember? So if we were to buy... Uh, 25 titanium plates just for an example here um, if we click on a titanium plate we're in the buy menu so I've gone to the market up here at the top buy menu sell menu you can sell goods you can just randomly sell goods you have directly usually always better to try and find them in contracts but sometimes you just need to get rid of resources because they're they're full so um, if you click you add one on this arrow here you add one at a time if you control click you add 10 if you shift click you add 100 same for here, if you shift click, it goes down by 100 at a time. Or you can move this slider here to um, go up and down. The slider is based on the cargo the cargo pod you want. So the slider will go up to 3,000 units because 3,000 tons, which in this case is 150 units. Um, if we were to get something a bit heavier, say micro circuits, um, it would be 75 units. So we don't want that, we want these. So I'm going to hold control and go one, two, and then click one, two, three, four, five. So if I was to buy, 25 titanium plates land them on uh, on my on the moon and then sell them to this contract we would actually make some money we would make a thousand 
375 because it's going to cost us 18,625 to buy them in and we sell them for 20,000 plus we get some science on top so cool why don't we do that that will also give us 10 plates to spare so we can still use them to build things so we need we need to turn in plates to build things to do stuff so i'm gonna buy 25 of them in but when you buy them cargo pod appears here so you click this and you choose where to land it normally somewhere around the elevator and near the landing pad so bump that can land there and they will take it direct from this and put it into here and uh, then this pod will fly away he says hopefully this speed up time go faster Away he goes, and that contract will be complete. We made a little bit of money. We got a bonus first as well. contract has just been completed, and I'm already negotiating the next one. We're in a unique situation. We're at an excellent pace to rebuild production while there's still no alternative to our product on Earth. Even the most basic resources will sell at extremely favorable prices. Awesome. Okay, so... So um, I've completely forgot that that contract would have given us a bonus as well. So I would always, all, I always look at the base for the contract. So the contract was twenty thousand. If we brought the goods in, we would have made money on it, which is fantastic. The bonus is a bonus. So we actually made ten thousand on top of that because we got thirty thousand instead. So the best way to look at contracts, um, I don't think we have the contracts open yet. No, we have no available ones at the moment. But you look through the contract list and you'll go like, oh, that one's going to give us this much money. Ignore the bonuses in there because you're not always guaranteed to get them because delivery times, your drones could be busy. It could be many things happen. So uh, look at the bonus. Like, okay, so it's going to give us, say, 80,000. Let's look at how much it is to buy that on the market. Okay, so it's, it's 10 of, it's, say, it's 20 modular frames going to give you 80,000. It'll cost us 41,000 to get them. We'll make 40,000 on that. So it's worth doing. It's worth just buying the resources to sell, speculate, to accumulate. So it's absolutely worth doing sometimes to just look at how much is what's in the market. And be like, oh, I could make 20 grand on that one. I could make 10 grand on this one. Also, if they've got science in them, you might be able to be like, okay, so I'll only make like 3,000 credits on this on this contract, but it will give me a boost to my science because I'll get some science bonuses added to me. So it's worth doing. You're investing in science. You can buy science directly um, if you come into um, the... Oh, it's offline at the moment, so... Uh, maybe not. okay you can't buy science directly then from crust that's i guess you can't do this mode this module here now lets you buy science i guess that's a sandbox thing so so we can't buy science okay ignore me ignore me on that one also um this video's gone on long enough and i have talked a lot but i'm trying to explain things so hopefully i know i know i've done a series already trying to explain things but hopefully um if one person learns something i'm happy that'll do but uh, we made thirty thousand for that one cool and it cost us Twenty thousand to buy so we made just over 10 grand awesome so we shall leave this one here we shall come back next time and we shall continue from there i need to get titanium going because we need to get smart concrete running well, we've got smart concrete to 10 grand we need titanium plates so we'll get this all built over here and we will come back next episode and we will continue on from there so i will say thank you very much for watching everybody i hope you have enjoyed this one and i do hope to see you again in the next one and until then, as always, fun.